Why, hello there. Jacob here. And today, figure I quick break down the Minnesota Vikings Week 3 preview. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Yeah, doing this video a little differently than I normally do them because, well, as you can clearly see, the lights have been turned off on this season so far. I mean, just... Yeah, I mean, basically self-inflicted wounds, self-inflicted pain, and just self-inflicted issues have really put us in a bad spot. All in two after two weeks. And it's not for a lack of not being in the games, it's more so the lack that we can't hang on to the fucking ball. Hey Vikings, newsflash, hang on to the ball! Like... <laughs> I don't think I really have to say anything else as far as previews is concerned other than hang on to the frickin' ball. Because that is what's killed us. The offensive line has been killing us. The defense has been pretty solid, all things considered. But again, just like in 2018, just like in 2020, just like in 2021, the defense can only do so much. Just like the last couple of years, the offense could only do so much. It's like... The Vikings, for whatever reason, always have a hard time getting all three facets of the game going at the same time. Offense, defense, and special teams. As a lot of people know, and as most of you know, you need all three phases of the game to be successful. And not just successful, but all three phases of those games, and all three phases of the game, I should say, are what basically help guide you to the promised land guide you to the future, guide you to where you want to be. And where is that? The Super Bowl. But for whatever reason, the Vikings every year always have one glaring issue, and this year it's ironically enough been the offense, and not hanging on to the ball. Which I know, the offensive line has had a lot of issues. I mean, there's a lot of injuries. And I hope, 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 that Dalton Reisner coming in can help. I hope, hope, hope that Cam Akers can contribute and hang on to the ball. If anything, this should also hopefully piss off Alexander Madison to a point where he says, you know what, fuck this, I'm the number one guy, and goes out there and balls out for over 100 yards and like three touchdowns. I would not be mad about that, especially after the last week we can change that Madison has had, which, like I say, if you saw my reaction to the post game and stuff like that, I don't think I need to rehash that. And again, if anyone ever believes in that stuff, you will be banned from my channel, no questions asked, because no one deserves that shit, regardless of where you work, your color, your ethnicity, and whether or not you play professional sports or not. But yeah, kind of turning back to this game here. We have a battle of 0-2 teams at U.S. Bank Stadium. Both teams coming off of their own struggles. Minnesota not being able to hang on to the damn ball, but can still score and can still show up pretty damn well on defense. The Chargers have just, I don't know really a lot about what's going on there, but they've been in a lot of close games, and they too just couldn't close the door on either occasion. So, this is going to be a very evenly matched game, a very, very close game, and a game that, frankly, if the Vikings can win this, get some momentum going. Keep that up. Keep pushing. Keep driving. Keep moving. Because, I mean, the NFC North, as of this point, isn't that great of a division. I mean, the Lions look good, but they did lose to the Seahawks. The Packers are still figuring themselves out, and the Bears are, well, who we thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, by the way, that is a whole shit show down there in Chicago that has been going on, or reportedly, I mean, yesterday, good golly, Miss Molly was their breaking news about that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> kind of bring this back to the Vikings here. The opportunity is still there, fellas. If we can get a couple wins in a row here, because, like I say, if we can beat the Chargers this week, then we go to Carolina, 
which is still figuring their own struggles out. And sounds like Bryce Young could be out for a couple weeks as well after suffering an injury on Monday night last week. Who knows? But the Vikings need to get this done. And yes, I understand two games in two weeks, or like, you know, two games in literally four days is not easy, especially coming off of a heartbreaking loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team that in theory we should have blown out, but maybe the Buccaneers are actually a little bit better than we thought they were. You know, again, that's why you play the games on the field and not on paper. <laughs> so, and then of course, four days later, you travel to Philadelphia, who, well, I mean, for all intents and purposes, as of now, is still the best team in the NFC because they did make it all the way to the Super Bowl, even though I still argue the 49ers are probably the odds-on favorite at this point just because they have everything clicking right now and the Eagles still have a couple things to sort out, but they're right there too. And the Cowboys are another team to keep an eye on for the NFC, but whew, yikes. They're going to be without Trayvon Diggs for the rest of the year due to a torn ACL in practice, so that could really hamper that defense, and as... A guy who has the Cowboys defense in a couple of leagues kind of makes me a little nervous, not going to lie, but uh, thankfully they also still have guys like Stephon Gilmore. So, boy, that, that, that pickup is looking a lot better or like looking a lot more important these days than even just a week ago or five days ago. Even. So, <clears throat> but yeah, basically... Wrapping this whole ramble session on and stuff like that. Vikings, hang on to the ball. Offensive line, work this out. Let's try to get some more cohesion here. Oh, and again, the addition of Dalton Reisner will be huge, will be beneficial. At least from a sake of having extra bodies on the offensive line, which again, after Ole Udo's injury, is pretty much a necessity at this point. And also Cam Akers, I mean, it's going to be intriguing. And by the way, it sounds like the picks that are swapped were a 2026 sixth round pick goes to the Vikings for a 2026 seventh. It's either that or the other way around. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's a low-risk, high-reward situation there. I mean, all else fails, we can just cut Cam Akers and really no skin off our back other than a late-round pick in 2026, which is a long ways away if you're a sports fan because, well, we've seen seasons where coaches and GMs get canned after, like, 10 games. Some rightfully so, maybe some not so rightfully so, but, again, that's just professional sports. Whew. But, yeah. Come on, Vikings, get your heads out of your asses, keep producing, and for the love of God, hang on to the ball. If we can cut down and eliminate the turnovers, I like our chances in this game. Especially because it sounds like the Chargers could be out some key pieces, like Austin Eckler, Eric Kendricks could be out. I mean, that's two big pieces right there. So, uh, yeah. Alrighty, Vikings. You know what you got to do. Let's get the damn thing done. Skull Vikes. Let's get that first win and get some momentum because, like I say, after today, or after Sunday, I should say, we go to Carolina. And then after Carolina, we host the Chiefs, who are turning back into the Chiefs. So... Yeah, got to take it one game at a time here, but let's get the damn thing done. So yeah, that'll conclude this preview video. And also stay tuned as well, because I do have a couple of uh, pickups coming in the mail over the next few days or so, including an ever-expanding part of my collection and a brand new jersey coming up for this upcoming sports season in a different sport, which you could probably guess knowing my track record of jerseys over the last i'd say 12 months or so <laughs> so but uh yeah that'll wrap things up so until we meet again this is jacob have a good day